Hi, I'm Trey Mayo, Fire Chief for the City of Rocky Mount. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Hot Topics. Today we're filming at the rear of Fire Headquarters at the corner of Cokie Road and East Raleigh Boulevard. And joining me today is Captain Darvin Moore. Captain Moore is one of our operations captains uh, assigned to Engine 1 here at Fire Headquarters. And uh, Captain Moore, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. And today we're going to talk about uh, a new tool in the Fire Department's toolbox, uh, and that is a uh, rapid deployment uh, single man, single person um, ground monitor. Uh, this particular, there are a number of companies that make these devices. This one uh, is an Akron product. We, for many years here in the Rocky Mountain Fire Department, have used Akron appliances. And um, this is an Akron uh, Mercury Quick Attack. So before we get into the nozzle, I want to talk a little bit about what has driven the demand for us needing to be able to flow higher volumes of water more quickly than we did 25 or 30 years ago. Now, uh, today is Wednesday. You and I were talking on Monday. Uh, you were teaching a class here for some of your for some of the crews at headquarters, and I just happened to, to walk through and sat in on a few minutes of it. And one of the things we got to talking about was our uh, our need now to be able to flow higher volumes of water than what we did when you and I first got into the fire business. And uh, we were talking about a report uh, that has come out of some lab studies and, and uh, folks like Factory Mutual and Underwriters Laboratories and, and other uh, uh, NIST, the National Institute for uh, Standards and Testing, uh, they uh, frequently do fire modeling studies. And, and what they showed uh, from their fire modeling studies back in the 70s was that in a typical 2,000 square foot single family residential home, uh, a family could expect to have about 17 minutes uh, after a fire started to be able to evacuate that, that residence, that structure before things became untenable. Uh, more recent studies in the last several years have shown that that number over the over the last four decades has gone from 17 minutes to three minutes. Now, uh, now folks have about three minutes from the time a fire starts to be able to evacuate that same 2,000 square foot single family residence and be able to get out before conditions become untenable. So talk to us a little bit about what has changed in the last 40 years that has driven that number down so dramatically. Um, where the contents and salvage structure now has changed a bunch, you know, you have more heavier plastics. Um, the lightweight construction of wood now has, has changed it also too, so a lot of fires burn a whole lot harder. Um, e even the upholstery on your couch might, might has, has definitely changed a little bit, so that, that causes the fire to get extremely more hotter now. Um, flashovers is, is more imminent to occur in the structure, like, like you said, in less than 17 minutes. So. Um, that's why you know it's imminent that we actually get on scene faster and you know and start fire stream, fire operations real early in the incident. So right, uh, and, and studies now show that a cube, you know just go in and take random stuff out of the typical house, uh, the um, you know carpet, upholstery, curtains, uh, television cabinets just all the stuff that's in a house just just randomly take a cubic foot of that stuff and it burns with the same energy production as a cubic foot of gasoline so that tells us how flammable the contents of a modern house are today uh, houses are also built much more tightly today because of uh, the consumer demand for more energy efficiency we all want uh, lower power bills lower gas bills um, and and to one of the ways that that the building codes have achieved that is by building buildings tighter so that they don't exchange air as as easily uh, with the outside as they used to and all of those things work against us as firefighters because they hold the heat in the plastics are burning more more uh, readily and uh, you know, back when you and I first got into business, uh, you, you know, the standard attack line for an engine company at a house fire was an inch and a half that flowed 95 gallons a minute. And I would have bet you back then that in a, a typical residential house, 
with two or three or four rooms on fire, if the roof was still on that house, I could go in with a 95-gallon-a-minute nozzle and I could put that house out with no problem. Do you have any argument against that? No, that is correct. And now our standard off attack line is an inch and three-quarter line, and we have nozzles that now flow 200 gallons a minute, so we're flowing twice the water, and, uh, and, and it is not... Uh, is not regularly, but it is not uncommon for crews to have to retreat with a nozzle flowing 200 gallons a minute just because there's not enough water there to overwhelm the fire because it is burning so intently. Yes, you agree with that? Okay. All right. So that brings us to uh, this this nozzle that we have before us here on the table. Um, and and this is, tell, tell us about this nozzle. Um, this is a Mercury Quick Attack made by Akron. Um, it's, it weighs about, about 14 pounds. Um, the um, total stowing, stowing uh, length is, is, is like 14, 14 inches and fully deployed is, is about, about 24 inches. And the, the, whole, the goal of this is to quickly get off the truck, get water flowing as fast as you can on the seat of the fire as fast as you can. And, and up until the advent of this device, and, and this is not an extremely new technology. They've been around for eight or ten years, I guess. Um, what what was our option prior to having a device like this? The only other option that you had that before this amount of water would be a, um, a deluge gun, and that and that's that's kind of cumbersome. A uh, deluge gun actually weighs uh, about 60 pounds more, which is weighs about 76 more pounds, and. <clears throat> You have to get the, monitor, the nozzle from a different part of the truck and you have to establish a big water supply for it. So it makes it very cumbersome to, to get it out rapidly based on the fire conditions. Okay, so we've, we've gone from, from a, when you say a deluge gun, we, we uh, I have to be sure that I keep this stuff on, the, on the, a layman's level, if you will. We have to keep it in, in layman's terms. What you're talking about is a pre-piped, pre-mounted, uh, heavy stream device that stays on typically uh, in, in most fire departments it stays mounted on top of an engine uh, and it can be it can be deployed right there it, it can be used as it sits as it's stowed on the top of the engine um, but that sort of limits your ability to play a water stream because it's, it's up high uh, and you sort of have to have the engine in exactly the right spot to be able to use it. So to, to work around that, the manufacturers gave us what I what typically referred to as a deluge set or a ground set. Uh, and that, so you would remove that nozzle from the top of the engine and then it attaches to a base that sits on the ground that is then fed. In, in the case of, of us here in Rocky Mount, it would be fed with a five-inch supply line. Yes, sir. Uh, so you're, we're talking about something that's in several pieces, located in several places on the engine, yes, and we've replaced it with something that weighs about a fifth of what that deluge gun would weigh uh, that is made to be deployed by one firefighter uh, fed with a three inch line rather than a five inch line um, and capable of flowing 500 gallons of water very quickly. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, tell us, uh, just, just for the viewer's benefit, uh, give us a couple of scenarios of where you see yourself using, uh, your crew using uh, this rapid, ra uh, quick attack monitor. The, the monitor quick attack can be used um, here in Rocky Mountain. We have, we have structures that are close in proximity and probably maybe some, we have some less than 20 feet apart. So, you know, we can actually deploy this. Um, when you have a fire, you have, might have flames and heat, radiant heat impinging on an, another structure. So this will be set down so we can protect the adjacent structure so that won't actually catch on fire. The adjacent structure won't catch on fire. So this can be set down fairly fast to protect the adjacent structure on either side um, for 500 gallons per minute, protect the structure and not use a man where we can actually use a man to fight fire in the house that's actually burning. So. Right, so once this thing is set up, uh, if you were using it for exposure protection like yes, you're talking about, once this put in place, that firefighter can then walk away and do something else. Yes, they don't have to stay right there with it. Exactly. Okay. Another thing I think of is, you know, we here in Rocky Mount are uh, in a very good location. We sit at the intersection of US 64 and Interstate 95. Uh, as a result of that, we have uh, a number of uh, buildings in, in town, in the city that uh, 
uh, that companies came here to take advantage of our location with good north-south access along the interstate. Uh, the, the point of my story is uh, we have a lot of large buildings that have very open floor spaces. Uh, they have uh, sometimes a number of bays of, of roll-up doors. And if you were to uh, arrive on scene at a fire in one of those buildings, uh, and a and, uh, fire was coming out one or more of those roll-up doors, you would certainly have more body of fire than uh, several conventional handline hose streams would be able to, to, uh, to control. So, you know, I see in the, in, the, in the case of this nozzle, you would be able to deploy one or more of these nozzles and, and, and be able to control that fire much more readily than you could with conventional hand lines. So a lot of applications, uh, yours more defensive, mine more offensive. Uh, one's not right or wrong. We do both offensive and defensive uh, fire control. Uh, but just two situations uh, that you and I have thought of right off the top of our head where this, where this nozzle could be used. Uh, tell us about the price of this thing. Um, the retail price for this is, runs about $4,000 just for the base mount itself. Um, the nozzle runs about, about $600, so it, you know, this, this is an expensive tube, but it's weird, definitely weird, worth this money because, like I said, you know, it, it actually saves structures that are maybe probably 10 times worth uh, the cost of this, this um, tool itself. So uh, it's definitely a benefit to the citizens of the city. Absolutely, and this thing will last. You and I will be retired before this nozzle gets retired. Uh, so they last a long time, and over its life, your point is well taken. It will save much more property than its initial investment. Uh, you know, and I, and I, uh, you know, I get questions from the public from time to time about uh, why the fire business costs so much, uh, and this nozzle is is uh, is a good example of of why things cost so much. This is an engineered piece of equipment, uh, and not only is it engineered, you see um, the way the waterway is designed in it uh, is made to drive that nozzle down. When the water flows through it, it creates downward force. Uh, you know that's an engineered design. You just don't come up with an elbow and yes, and throw this thing together and say, okay, that's that's good yeah. enough. This you know. The business we're in is we're not in the business of being good enough. We're in the business of having it right. Um, and and in addition to just the, the the technology and the engineering that goes into the design of it, uh, this nozzle goes through very rigorous testing to be able to pass standards for nozzles that are established by the National Fire Protection Association, sort of a, a rule-making body for the fire service, if you will. So, uh, you know, when you consider the research and design, the testing, uh, and everything that goes into producing something to be used under the conditions that we use it, uh, it becomes more easy to understand why uh, these things cost so much. So, uh, well, thank you for reviewing that with us. What we're going to do now is see the crew from Engine One. Uh, we're going to let our very able videographer, Mark, get turned around here and show us uh, Engine One on a, on a hydrant, on a, on a water supply, and we're going to look at the speed of deployment for this quick attack monitor uh, in comparison to the old deluge gun, the ground monitor, uh, that would have been our tool uh, that we would have used prior to us acquiring this device. So, okay, thank you. And uh, when, we join, when you join us back, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be turned around the other direction and you'll get to see this nozzle in action. Okay, so now what we see is uh, engine one is, is facing us. We're looking at the rear of it and it is already connected to the hydrant. They have their hydrant connected, their water supply established. Now, Captain Moore is still standing here with me. Captain Moore, tell us what we're gonna see. Um, you see firefighters um, exit, the, exit the, uh, the fire apparatus. Um, they will come to the back of the hose bed at the back of the, the fire apparatus, and they will start deploying lines off the back, off the back of the truck. Um, you, you will see the five inch, which we have five inch hose loaded on the back of the truck, which is 1,500 feet, and you will see the three inch line deployed from the back of the truck also too. One thing you need to remember is see how fast quick, the, the quick attack be deployed opposed to the five inch being deployed. And the, the quick attack, it stays pre-connected on what I call a dead load. It's, it's connected to, uh, already connected to three inch hose that is not on a discharge. Yes, so sir, that is correct. The firefighter pulls it off as far as they need to go and then the engineer, the driver position on the, on the, on the engine, they, they would disconnect 
the hose count going into the hose bed and they connect it onto a pump discharge uh, so that they can uh, they always have the right amount of hose as long as they don't need more than 1500 feet of hose yes sir that is correct okay all right i think we're ready go ahead right. and give them the go ahead And this is an engine company staffed with four firefighters. We staff seven engines uh, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, along with two aerial trucks and two rescue companies. Five of our seven engines are staffed with four firefighters. Three of them are typically staffed, uh, I'm sorry, two of them are typically staffed with three firefighters. So what we see now is the, uh, the Mercury quick attack is already in position. The hose has been disconnected from the back of the hose bed and the engineer is making the connection on a passenger side discharge. Talk us through what's going on here with the deluge gun, Captain Moore. Yes, sir. He, he's getting the deluge gun off the top of the truck. Uh, he also has to uh, grab the base mount that's in, the, in one of the compartments. Uh, once he gets the base mount, he will stake it down to the ground. And once he gets it staked, he will connect both the nozzle itself and, and the ground mount. And it, once he gets all that stuff, he starts flowing water. You see right now that um, the Mercury Quick Attack is already flowing water already, and, and they haven't even got the base mount yet. So that, that's the purpose of the Mercury Quick Attack. You have water very rapidly flowing, up, very rapidly as opposed to, you know, it takes a few minutes to actually set up the the uh, deluge gun itself. So. I got you. And, and one person essentially has deployed that mercury quick attack. Y yes, sir. Uh, and and two are working on the deluge set, and a, and a third, the engineer, is making the hose connection uh, at the at the pump discharge up at the engine. So we've got one person who is flowing water, and three are still working on the. Yeah. Uh, on the deluge set. Yes, sir. As long as the quick attack uh, is is manned by a firefighter, they don't have to. Uh, that that nozzle does not have to be staked. And this other, this deluge set that they're working on setting up now, it has to be staked to stake down. Yes, sir. That is correct. I should have been running my stopwatch. I'd say we've been flowing water out of the quick attack for 30 or 45 seconds. Yes, sir. And uh, still trying to get the deluge set put together. And this, this very clearly establishes the beauty of the quick attack yes, sir. monitor is that, uh, you know, we've got water on the fire so much more quickly. And, you know, a fire grows so fast. We talked earlier on about the plastics and the synthetic materials that are in, in houses now and uh, you know a fire can double in size in seconds uh, just uh, it's just phenomenal how quickly fire grows these days uh, and the, you know the point to be taken is the longer we wait to put water on the fire the bigger the fire gets and the more water it takes to control it so you know not only are we saving water we're saving damage we're saving the environment the benefits of this quick attack nozzle just go on and on yes sir, okay sure so we now have we now have water um we now have water from the deluge gun uh probably i'm gonna guess 90 to 120 seconds yes sir slower uh requiring about two and a half times as much labor and just for the viewers, we get this question. You see that five inch hose that's feeding the deluge set on this side, that yellow hose. Uh, it has a number of pinholes in it. Um, but we test it, we service test this hose annually. And as long as it holds its service test, we keep it in service that as long correct. as we can. Uh, that hose uh, that hose comes in 100 foot sections and it's about $6 a foot. Yes, so sir. That's a $600 piece of hose there and every engine carries 15 pieces of it so right. uh, we use it as long as we can and uh, what you see there is not uh, as detrimental as one might believe okay captain moore this has been very educational uh, for me and uh, i hope the viewers have found it to be that way as well uh, we certainly appreciate everybody joining us on this edition of hot topics 
Uh, be sure to visit us on the web at RockyMountFire.org. We also have Facebook and Twitter accounts. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, and we'll see you next month on Hot Topics when we'll talk with Kim Wittig, our fire and life safety educator, about Operation Heartbeat and our uh, hands-only CPR program. Until then, take care.